Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to the second channel geopolitical video. You might notice that I'm in some different surroundings for this one, and that is because I have gone on the run. I got a little bit too close to the story on this one, because get this, there is not just one best kebab in the UK. There should be, I mean, clearly to be the best, you have to be the very uh, top of your game, there can only be one, but here is a place called Best Kebab in Southend-on-Sea. How is that possible? I mean, it looks like a best kebab in a seaside town with that blue red font from the 90s, but then I found this in Swanscombe. It is another place calling itself Best Kebab, but it looks entirely different. It's not a chain, it's not related to that first one, but it still has the exact same name of Best Kebab. But then, as we all know, there is Best Kebab in Luton, the actual Best Kebab, if you just ignore the, the, the ratings on Google, 3.9 star, and the food quality. This is the Best Kebab as we all know. In fact, people fly in via London Luton Airport. I think they actually had to build the airport to get people to turn from the kebabs. Okay, is that enough? garbage to start the video with. Okay, now we can talk about something very weird and niche that I was thinking about recently, because you might know, or you might not know if you follow US elections, that in the 2020 US election, the uh, the, the the place with the highest swing of votes between one party and the other was uh, the District of Columbia. There was 92% of people voting for the Blue Party versus 5.4% for the Red Party. This is the widest margin, again, for either party, but it's a widest margin by such a long shot. And it's really interesting because if you look further into this, one, and you look into, I don't know, first of all, the fact that they were running against the DC statehood Green Party that still did terribly, and like, you know, like how just basically overwhelming the victory was. It's interesting because when you think about it, this is the area in which the president, regardless of his party, I think it's more interesting when you say 2016, where the Blue Party won this area, but the Red Party won the country, uh, despite this area voting blue to red by a margin of uh, what even is that? Like 22 to 1? 22 and a half to 1. Uh, despite this error, error, error voting blue to red, 22 to 1, uh, still it is a red person who is in charge of this, and indeed the entire country, right? But it's much more interesting that like, yeah, this is where the White House and everything is, this is where the seated government is, but yet it votes so overwhelmingly different to the rest of the country, or at least very overwhelmingly different to uh, the people who are in charge of it. And I find that to be an interesting little tidbit, right? The like, huh, yeah, as it so turns out, uh, there is a part of the country where uh, yeah, there's a part of the country where the government must sit, and that part of the country doesn't have to vote for the government which sits inside of it. And so, um, actually, you know, just just for fun, because DC is such a weird little uh, like uh, outlier in elections. It's voted blue in every election since its inception, and not only by a little bit. It's always been the widest margin of victory every single election. Seriously, go back as far as you want to try and prove whatever you point you can. Even in 1984, which is the election. Um, the 1984 election was obviously the one where, uh, it, again, the Red Party sweeped the entire country minus one state, but it was actually sweep the entire country minus one state plus DC. And the one state, if you look at the margin, it was within, what is that, 4,000 votes, but the not one state, the DC, which can we even click that, you know, which can have to... I, let, let's try our best. Can we click on the? It, this is like GeoGuessr, but it's part for part for Wikipedia video. Boom! Look at that. You can see how like, huh? Even then, there is just no chance. This is always a district that votes, that votes that one way. And then I started to wonder, what about other countries, huh? And so I found this. This is Ottawa Centre, the uh, the central district of uh, where <laughs> it, uh, the central district of Ottawa, which is of course the capital of Canada. And I looked it up. I was I was curious. Is there a best kebab in, uh, you know, in, in Ottawa? And there is not one. So as you can see, it's safe from conspiracies in that way. However, the interesting thing about this, ooh, less elements M&M, grocery store uh, open till 1700. Maybe I should go to a grocery store uh, in Montreal, what do you, or not Montreal, in Quebec. What do you guys reckon? Is that a good idea? Anyway, so uh, as you can see, this is where the houses of, uh, not only their own city hall, uh, not only this university, but also the Parliament of Canada. I uh, I learned recently, uh, you know, okay, you know, I too many tangents here, but isn't it weird that like the address of the government, like the White House is obviously protected on all sides, uh, and like Downing Street, the whole street is locked off, but like in 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 lots of countries, it's just like yeah, there's just a street where the the Prime Minister's house is. That's that's weird to me. It's it's called Sussex Road, I want to say in uh in in Canada. I learned recently via a Canadian. Anyway, so this is where the Parliament of Canada is. Do you want to confirm that I've done this correctly? This is in fact their district. But the district, this uh, you know, right now 
is indeed represented by the people who are in government. The Liberal Party, which is the vaguely centre slash centre left party in Canada, uh, has both this district and the country. But from from the previous time, in say the forty first Parliament, it was a Conservative government, but a very again New Democratic Party is kind of the very left party in Canada. It was a very left party that controlled the area, but yet it is the uh, the, the right party who was in charge. Isn't that wacky? Isn't that interesting? And the answer is kind of yeah, right? Like. Uh, it, it makes you realize something that, like, when it comes to representation, when it comes to a country, any system, you know, maybe I'm just being, I'm settling for too little here. Um, but, you know, people have this whole thing of, like, it is self-determination. But yet, when you are talking about rules being made for you, obviously, when you're in the minority of votes, uh, you know, like, oh, in the case of America, the minority of electoral votes, when you're in the minority, it's going to feel like, yeah, you are being bullied around by the party who has all of the power. If you vote for the party that isn't in government, it's going to feel bad because that party gets to make rules that affect and change your life, as I'm sure many people realize now that the, the fullest extent of that has come out over the last year, right? Like, there are... Ooh, square pins or ads. Thank you for letting me know, Google. <laughs> anyway, so, um... Ooh, let's see some case data for COVID-19 on a map, shall we? Where, where, where should we avoid? We should avoid... Well, you know what? This map is telling me to go to, to Quebec, but I just cannot do that, so... Oh, it goes county by county in America. You know what, this video, we're keeping it on track. So it's interesting because people talk about self-determination in that way. But, you know, there is always going to be an element of like, yeah, the people who elect, you know, the the, the government of the uh, United States is always going to be in an, it's going to be surrounded by people who did not vote for it, or at least half the time, assuming 50% blue party, 50% red party. Uh, the government of, uh, of Canada, it looks like, again, something close to 50-50 between whether it is... Uh, the government of the time, or whether it swings further away to the the other left party, which makes things even more interesting uh, there. But like, they are not represented by the government which controls them, and that seems kind of crazy on some level. But also, that is the the compromise you make as a country, right? You you pull all of your your votes into one place, and then if your votes don't win, it goes some way. And so I looked into, for instance, the 2020 Australian Capital Territory, and I found that it's the exact same story. There is currently a liberal government in uh, Australia. Uh, in Australia, the parties are much closer to the center, and their center-right-ish party uh, is called the Liberal Party, because liberal actually has vaguely those those meanings outside of America, whatever. You know, we're not here to address your incorrect political terminology on the internet. Although, because of the English language, eventually liberal does just come to mean not, you know, liberal in the classical sense and actually being liberal and all the... Anyway, whatever. So, uh, basically, the Liberal Party, which rules Australia, does not rule the Australian Capital Territory. Again, the territory where the uh, where the laws are made for the rest of Australia is controlled by people not in... <laughs> it, who are not in control of the thing. As you can see, it's the Labour Party. I think they also might need to... Yeah, 13 seats in the majority. They also need to have the Greens uh, with them, so that's even more interesting. It's a Labour-Green coalition there, which isn't true nationwide. And that's very interesting. But what is more interesting than that to me is the fact that when you look into the city of London, so London is obviously a huge city. It's uh, it's in fact a city of cities, some would even say. It's actually boroughs, but borough, boroughs is just a fancy term for city. So if you look at the city of London, and you look, as you can see, I've been scrolling through right here. Uh, if you look at the cities of London and Westminster, uh, which is where the Houses of Commons are, also the other house, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but but I, I think also maybe the Supreme Court, also Downing Street. All of the government bodies are focused here. But interestingly enough, since its creation at the 19th... Because, you know, the, the, the general trend for all of these is no matter who is in government, the because it is distinctly in the heart of the city, it votes left because cities are generally left, right? Left party, uh, you know, very left or slightly left party and then left party or very left party. It's a, That's the rule everywhere else. But if you look at the city of London and Westminster, again, the seat which contains the Houses of Commons, uh, for, since its creation at the 1950 general election, the constituency has, has thus far always elected the candidate nom nominated by the Conservative Party. That is a weird thing. It is the center of a city, which in any term, and even in UK sense, most of London, by being in a city, is a left-leaning party in the UK. It's the Labour Party, the Red Party. Um, but yet the cities of London and Westminster are not. This is something very interesting to me. Um, so if you look, um, if you actually look into the results themselves, you can see how like it's been a pretty 
decent landslide too. Like for most of its history, like if you look around right here, it's like, yeah, 20,000 votes, 60% in 1992. And it stays roughly that if you look through all of its history until very recently, actually. If you look at 2019, the most recent election, it was very close to falling to the Liberal Democrats. In 2017, it was very close to falling to Labour. And I think that means that what you're actually seeing here is you're seeing the fall of the center of the city, even though it is the wealthy part. And again, even th this is the thing where like cities generally aren't, uh, fi it's it's filled with like a type of wealth, but it's not the same wealth that you correlate with uh, right-wing voting. It's a, uh, it's, it's a different type of wealth that you might correlate with the left. And you can see that like, yeah, the left-wing parties combined here did get more than the right. E even if you look back here, it's just that it's always been vaguely split in some way. And so, yeah, that's a very interesting thing that the cities of London Westminster is the only major uh, center city district I can find anywhere in the world, which is not just sometimes right, it is reliably uh, right. And uh, the other interesting thing is that lots of minor parties run here. If you're going to run as a minor party, you do this. So this, this is the Liberal Democrats. It's the, uh, the roughly center party in the UK. Uh, again, using liberal to mean uh, the, the vaguely center-right meaning and using Democrats to mean social Democrats. It's a weird combination of two parties that doesn't make any sense outside the UK. Um, their, their candidate, who is a big uh, guy in the UK, uh, if you're familiar with it, you, you might know him, came very close to winning. But also, as well as that, there's also the Green Party, there's the CPA, the Christian People's Alliance. Yeah, I thought that's what that was. Uh, there's the Liberal Party, because the Liberal Democrats were formed from the Liberal Party and the Social Democrats. Apparently, the non the, the Liberal Party didn't all of them agree, so they still exist sometimes. And they, if, if you're going to run as a weird uh, minor party, you'll run in these elections. So it's so interesting to look because it was such a safe seat. It was like one of those safe places to run while still being represented. So you can see that like, yep, there is the One Love Party. Um, they identified as techno-progressive. That's a, that's a fun term I haven't heard before. Uh, there's the Young People's Party, which uh, it was founded by the ideology of the 19th century economist Henry George. Uh, it, it tends to replace many taxes on productive. I'm curious about that, actually, but we'll, we'll pass for now. You can look at like, oh, yeah, there's the CPA party again. There's sister. Cannabis is safer than alcohol party. I mean, I, that's like a, a valid enough like cause, although I don't know why you need to name your party that. It's like, my party's name is that, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of some basic fact. I'm running on the, you know, like, uh, I, I'm actually trying to think of a university. You know, I'm running on the crime is bad party. We should have less crime party. Uh, you know, like, less polices and less crime. That's, that's my political manifesto. Lower taxes and more spending. That's what I'm running for. Anyway, so if you look, there's also the class war party, which is even more interesting and weird. And so, yeah, basically any minor party runs in the cities of London, Westminster. Literally everyone and their dad has run here. And you might think, oh, Toy Cat, you're going a bit far. Just because there's the class war party and the sister party and the, and the young people's, the one love and the liberal and the CPA, it doesn't mean everyone's run here. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure you could take, for example, that one... Uh, that one YouTuber, you know, the apolitical one, I, I think his name is uh, Tom Scott. I mean, like, oh, oh, wait, what's that? Mad Cup and Tom. It turns out <laughs> literally everyone who wants to make a weird point does in fact run here. And so, yeah, did you know that it's true? Also, this, is, this isn't like a weird uh, Wikipedia misleading thing. I believe he's made a video on his own channel. Yeah, he has made a video on his own channel discussing this one. And so, yeah, he got 0.2% of the vote or last place. If he just got another six... You know, if, if he just got 14 more votes, he could have come third from last. That'd be a that'd be a nice little thing to have on your your resume, I guess. And so, yeah, isn't that interesting? I think it is. Uh, there are so many weird parties, and they like to run here. And uh, I've I've discussed weird little asynchronatic parts of politics before, but this is one of those weird will eventually flip and be lost things. Again, I would imagine, uh, depending on the how the next election goes, that could be the end of this like reliably center that you know this this almost hypocrisy of a seat a center of a city but yet still not left-leaning uh, seat or maybe it will stay that way forever i mean generally speaking if you bet against long-standing trends you're gonna <laughs> be wrong there but uh yeah we'll see how that one goes for now but i hope you all enjoyed this video if you did then you know what it's the second channel video i you, 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 you enjoyed it too much. I, I literally clicked through four Wikipedia articles and show you some, some best kebab. You need to raise your standards is what you need to do. Should I look at where the COVID cases are where I'm at? So if this is red and this is orange and uh, this, oh, look at that. 
I, I'm in Badger, California, sir. That's how you say that, by the way. It's uh, Some people say Baja, but that's clearly a J, so it's Badger. Uh, and as you can see, 8.5, that's low. Is it lower than the UK, actually? Oh, no, it's not. See, I, you know what? Just, I, I mentioned this in my third channel video, but to, to enter America, I had to leave the 3.8 cases area, and I had to enter this, which admittedly, like, 7.5, 8.5 is, is low in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but that I had to go from the free free three point five uh, cases a day place or ca cases per hundred thousand uh, place to the seven point for the eight point five place just so I could enter. Let's see what New York's at. <laughs> Thirty two point four. Actually, no, it's New Jersey. So forty point six cases a day place. Is that the highest in the U.S.? Oh, that's crazy. Colorado's close. Should we just look at COVID maps all day? Oh, Michigan is winning. Michigan is winning this one. Yeah, who's who's winning the? I think it's India. So let's see if we can find who's got the highest numbers. Uh, India's got like high numbers, but they've also got too high a population. Ooh, is it Turkey? 72.1. I think they might, you know, I, I think it's Michigan winning as a state uh, and it's Turkey winning as a country. You know, you have to do better next time, guys. Ooh, Argentina. Ooh, no, Uruguay. Uruguay is, is pulling it off. Last minute, last minute win from behind there. Proud of you guys. Keep it up. Anyway, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then leave and never come back. Goodbye.